In this video, we're going to have a look at the link between fractions and percent and decimals and percent. So using our knowledge of the link between fractions and decimals and knowing that they're representing part of a whole, we're then going to incorporate percent. And percent is simply measured out of 100. So in comparison to fractions and decimals that are really looking at a whole, we're looking at out of 100. So let's consider some fractions. Let's start off with an easy fraction, 7 over 10. Well, because this is measured out of 10, we really want to get this to be measured out of 100 because percentages are out of 100. So we're going to write an equivalent fraction by multiplying the top and bottom by 10, which makes this 70 out of 100. So our just percent is 70%. So it's measured out of 100 instead of out of 10. Let's consider 3 out of 20. Again here, we're measuring out of 20 parts and we want to measure out of 100, which means that we're going to have to multiply the top and bottom by 5 to write an equivalent fraction that has the same value. And that tells us our percentage is 15%. Let's consider it the other way. Imagine that we've got, let's say, 42%. This means if we want to get back to a fraction, we need to write this as 42 out of 100. And now because we can see that both numbers are even, we can simplify by dividing by 2. To start off with, that might be easier if we can't clearly see a common factor other than 2. And we see that we've got 21 over 50. And 21 and 50 don't have any common factors, so we'll leave that as our simplest fraction. Now a decimal is just another form of representing a value, like a fraction. So it's part of a whole, when percentage is out of 100. So if we start with the percentage zero, sorry, the decimal 0 0.42, this is measured out of a whole. But now we want to measure it out of 100, which means we need to make our number 100 times bigger, which is going to move our decimal point two place values to the right because it's getting 100 times larger, and that will give us 42%. Let's consider 1.06. Now in this case, we recognize we've already got a whole. We've already got 100% plus the extra part. We're still going to multiply by 100 because we don't want it out of holes. We want it out of 100. And our decimal point is going to move two places to the right. And we end up with 106%. 100% plus 6% more. So we should expect our percentage to be over 100 Now let's consider if we go the other way. Let's imagine we've got 17.5%. So if we think about this logically, it's definitely less than 50%. It's definitely less than 25%. And it's 25% 0 0.25. So we're going to have a smaller decimal. So to go backwards, we're going to have to divide by 100. So this is where we're going to get our decimal point and it's going to move back to place values. So we end up with 0 0.175. This is a great example to also write 17.5% as a fraction. 17.5 over 100. Not a very nice fraction. We can't have a decimal within our fraction. The easiest way to get rid of 0 0.5 is to double everything. So if we do that, we end up with 35 over 200, which is much nicer. But we realise both of these are divisible by 5, and we end up with 7 over 40. And it just shows you three different for number formats to show the same value of 17.5%. This brings us to recognising some of our common values. One of our most common values we use is a half, which we know is 0 
or 50%. Then if we half a half, we end up with a quarter. So half of 0.5, or if we add a zero on the end of that, will help us of 0 0.25, and half of 50% is 25%, because we've simply taken half of a half. If we half a quarter, we end up with an eighth, and this is one of the really important ones to remember. One eighth as a decimal is halving that 0 0.25, which is 0 0.125, and half of 25% is 12.5%. So there's three really common ones that we can recall, hopefully quite efficiently. Two similar ones to these are one fifth, which we could increase as an equivalent fraction to two tenths, which is a two in the tenths column, or times in by 120%. If we halve 20%, we know we get 10%, which is 0 0.1 or 10 over 100. So knowing that 1 tenth is 0.1 or 10% is a really key. Once you know 10%, you can find any percent. And one of the last ones I really want to consider is 1 third. 1 third, we know, is 0 0.3 recurring, one of our recurring decimals. So that's like 0 0.333 and it keeps going. But if we want this as a percentage, we need to times by 100. So we get 33.3333%. So we can use the line to show it recurs or simply write it as that fraction a third, which means that two thirds is just going to be double this decimal, so it'll be 0 0.6 recurring, and double the percentage, 66.6 .6 recurring, or 66 and two thirds percent. So these are some really, really key common values to be able to efficiently recall. If we know these, we can simply calculate anything.